Good morning, good morning, everyone, all the nerds out there. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to the House of Nerds show, y'all. It's another awesome Sunday. I know time's different for everybody, but we're glad you're here, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, whatever. Um, we have a good show today. Uh, we've got Sergio here, of course, and we've Happy got Mr. Day. here. Happy Father's yeah. Day, Sergio. Happy yes. Father's Day, Sergio is the dad of all of us. Thank you so much. Thank Man. you so much. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Man, it's a beautiful day. I uh, just want a quick shout out to my two boys. Uh, I love you guys, and uh, we'll be hanging out later. And happy Father's Day, everybody, man. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Yes, thank you all. And, you know, to those that, you know, Father's Day is a harder day for, uh, we are happy to be a distraction for you guys as well. Um, so we are glad you are here um, to hang out with us regardless. Um, so we have a great episode for you today. As you all know, we have somebody super special on with us today. You all know that on the House Nerd Show, we absolutely adore the mini Dessa Layla star. It's one of our favorites right now. Uh, we had Ram V, the writer of it, on on our fifth episode. And today, we have the artist himself, Felipe Andrade, here today. And we're just going to have a great time chatting with him, checking in with him, you know, uh, getting to know him. So without further ado, Felipe Andrade is here. Yeah. Good morning. Nice. Good morning. Good afternoon. Yes. <laughs> How are you, Felipe? I'm good. And you guys? We're, We're great doing great, us. man. Thank you so much for, for joining us uh, today, Felipe. Um, very much appreciated. Happy to be here with you guys. Yeah. So, uh, Felipe, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, you know, just especially for people that aren't too familiar with your work, you know, and here we always talk about Layla Starr. Um, but tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, how you kind of got into this uh, comic world. Yeah, long short story is uh, I'm from Portugal, uh, specifically from uh, the capital, Lisbon. And uh, I always liked to draw and I was one of those kids that never stopped and I kept doing it. And uh, then I ended up doing some small workshops uh, from painting to sculpture to some architecture. So I always was really interesting in uh, multime multimedia stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, then I discovered comics when I was 12 years old and I discovered the, the Marvel books and I decided to, to give it a chance to work for Marvel. So, and 10 years later, I ended up to uh, start working with them. And before that, I did the sculpture in the Fine Arts University. Mm -hmm. uh, that was really game changing for me because uh, it's completely when the work uh, comes out in 3D and not too much in 2D, you know, even yeah. from drawing uh, kind of resembles that a little bit. And then I went to United States uh, a couple of times. I took some, uh, some uh, courses in uh, Los Angeles in normal school too. And it was, uh, was really cool to, to stay there and uh, check out the vibes in, uh, in Southern California and stuff like that. And then I traveled a little bit more. I lived in Hong Kong and now I was living in between Italy and Lisbon and now I'm staying in, in Lisbon. But this being said, I'm always like a little bit, uh, I was always <laughs> like a little bit uh, from point to point, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I think that shows in your work, like now that you're like, oh, you've kind of been everywhere. Like, I think that shows in what you do. And it was interesting that you mentioned that you've done like sculpture and stuff, because even though that's different than drawing on a page, has that had any influence on your, you know, 2D work, on your drawing and things like that? Yeah, it influences a lot because uh, you're starting to think in a different way. So the drawing, after all, kind of resembles it a, a little bit. For example, thinking the shadow of a form is different than thinking the shape of a form. So this kind of uh, uh, way of uh, watching the world, you know, it kind of gives you a different perspective and I think just uh, enriches uh, uh, I, my, my art and uh, the way that I do things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you brought up your art because 
for some artists, you can look at it and you can kind of know, like, that's so-and-so. Like, when you look at uh, Humberto Ramos, it's like, that's a Ramos. Mm -hmm. When you look at, you know, such and such, you you have your own distinct style, too. Like, when you look at it, mm -hmm. you're like, that's an Andrade. Like, you just know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, it, was there, like, an intent to kind of form your own personality through that artwork to have a distinct style? Or was it just something that happened naturally? It's funny that you mentioned uh, Humberto Ramos because Humberto Ramos was like uh, from this uh, crew that did the cliffhanger issues of uh, Danger Girl, C uh, Campbell, uh, Joe Madureira did uh, Battle Chasers, and Humberto Ramos did uh, The Crimson. And these were kind of my Bible when I was really, really young mm -hmm. because uh, I didn't buy a lot of comics that was not, uh, um, it, it wasn't easy for me. But uh, I grew up kind of with these kind of guys that had completely different styles. And I always mm. was really intrigued by that. You know, I wanted to be, to build my own style. And uh, like I was telling about my story, that was just to, to do a bridge for the way that I, I always saw um, and the way that I grew up in uh, doing comics or animation or sculpture or stuff like that, I always, like to bring guys, let's say, from uh, sculpture to my drawing, or guys, painters for, for for my drawings too. And this kind of stuff kind of built it in, like organically, the style throughout the years. But I have major influences, like uh, one guy that is like, uh, changed a little bit the game for me was Robert Valley. I don't know if you guys uh, know him. He's uh, from animation, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did these really cool angles, like uh, full TV, you know, like really skating and stuff like that. And I was always curious about it because of the Japanese animation too. So that kind of led me a little bit to think the camera instead of just thinking like uh, the superior pose or stuff like that. Yeah. So that's why I think. I'm, I'm glad you brought up animation because uh, last night I was reading the what if magic that you drew and there's this there's this full page and in this you can kind of see the different styles that you have you see you know the bottom of, of magic and Doctor Strange you see the usual your your own distinct style but then all these other characters they feel like they're informed from animation like what you're talking about they do yeah that that the top part especially. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny that you brought this up. Yeah, it's actually it's one of my favorite uh, pages uh, uh, from that book, actually. Um, it's a little bit of Nickelodeon in there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I grew up, uh, Nickelodeon was a huge influence in my work. So. Ah, interesting. Uh, yeah. You, uh, you wouldn't know that reading Layla Starr, because um, with Layla Starr, you're... <laughs> It's hard finding words to describe your art, but not because not because they don't exist, but because it's like, which word do I choose? Majestic, ethereal, like all these really cool words to describe just this art style. Steve, do you mind popping up a panel or two from Layla Star? Just yeah, for sure. I'll I do want it. people to <clears throat> First we'll kind go of with see that. what I'm talking about. We'll go with that. I mean, we'll go with you, you make then. buildings look like the prettiest things on the yeah. planet when they are typically the most boring things. Yeah. How do you take a scenery like this and make it look so rich? Um, I think it's because the way I, I kind of enlighten the things, you know, like, for example, analyzing with you guys this page, for example, I think the buildings look a little bit like uh, living things because of the color, actually. Mm -hmm. That is kind of different, you know, like uh, we are not expect because that's not real. It's like a little bit of imagination, you know. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I would, you're, I would you're, say. You're, you're trying to, like Lauren, you're saying words to describe Felipe's art. For me, yeah. uh, I would say elegant. And mm -hmm. uh, with Leila Star, I, 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 I don't know, but I found issue number three. I'm just gonna uh, come on and say I found it sexy. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, there's one. There's one page in particular I'm thinking of. I don't know if it counts as a spoiler, but there's one I'm thinking of that I'm like, mm, gravel. That was great. <laughs> the, the art style, the way uh, you know, um, I guess you form the people 
It's just uh, there's an elegance to it, and you you that page is a good one too. The colors in that, I see what you mean, Felipe, because those uh, those like red and blue kind of like neon tones. Oh, they're so good. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so I was saying uh, what you, you had mentioned um, uh, just a little earlier about uh, the camera angles that that you utilize uh, when you know you're paneling these books. It it almost it feels like when I'm reading Layla Star, like a like a film, in yeah. a sense. Uh, not not your typical paneling and camera angles. Now, was that done? Uh, I guess intentionally, or just just your style that's kind of um, kind of developed over the years. I always like the. <clears throat> I've always liked the, these kind of shots, always, like uh, Palp Plus, really wide, where you can show a lot of things, but you can hide a lot of things, too. And um, I found it throughout the years, I, I was trying, I will always try to push a little bit this, this layout. But uh, throughout the years, I was uh, really more, a little bit more comfortable with it, because it seems that it's easy, but it's not. It's uh, hard to choose uh, the, the angle because uh, I my camera I I work uh, my camera a little bit like uh, Visconti for example like the Italian guys you know like uh, not uh, too much Sergio Leone but a little bit like uh, wide mm -hmm. you have a center with uh, something happen but you have something important to, to the sides but not like the Japanese that move the important thing to the sides you know I like to be in the center but I want to give uh, different information to the to the reader you know let's say like a pigeon or something like that mm -hmm. and uh this kind or of uh, what or, or a crow like the last crow, exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. i use it a lot like uh, to show different things that are not actually in the plot you know but to set up the mood for the reader while it is watching he is feeling the the the, the situation for example, in Lila Star, but the, uh, of course, this is just uh, because Ram actually is uh, one of my favorite uh, writers at the moment. And uh, mm -hmm. so it's been like super incredible to work with him because his words are really beautiful, actually. You know, like uh, it seems mm -hmm. that it's, he's a little bit of, almost uh, mystic the way that, that he writes, you know. So it, yeah. it uh, drives me easily to the, to the scenes. So. But um, yeah, my layout kind of want to keep the pace slow. I don't want to, to give it, uh, like I worked for, for a long time uh, in my Marvel years. I was doing a lot of uh, diagonals, for example, mm -hmm. which are really cool. And you can play like, uh, let's say like uh, these shots where you can uh, almost uh, uh, play with the reader, you know? But uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, this space guarantees me, for me, the way that I work, guarantees me that uh, the feeling you're having throughout the comic is 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 calm, but uh, it's there, yeah. you know? You don't need too much to, you need to be attached, not to be like uh, amazed by it. And, it. and it sets the vibe. Yeah, I, I see like what, what you're saying, like with the more the angled panels or cameras, uh, lends itself more to like action like within within marvel um so definitely i i, I guess a, a step in a, in a different direction that you've taken it with um with leila star um how did you how did you get attached to this project you want to tell us a little bit uh give us some information on that and and how you uh kind of began to collaborate with with ramvi which you guys are doing uh just a, a beautiful amazing job on this book and I just quickly say uh, congratulations on, on honestly a, a magnificent piece of work that you guys have uh, put together here. Thank you um, and yes I, I, I have to agree I'm, I'm really happy to to be working with Ram and uh, he's redefining a little bit the way that I see comics too you know because mm. I'm feeling too attached to this project for example not to the project but the way that this project is being built. But uh, the connection was really random. I mean, I got uh, an email from Eric, our ed editor in Boom at Boom, and um, asking me about this project. And uh, when I read the plot, I mean, it was it, instantaneously I said yes. 
and mm -hmm. you know, it was like that. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's how I felt when I just read the synopsis of this book coming out. Right, I was just like, "Well, it's literally death personified. How can I say no to that? Just in of itself, you know." Um, yeah, and you mentioned, uh, you know, it, it's so great to hear that you really do love working with Ram, you know, because it, you, we hear so often, you know, creators saying, "Oh yeah, we like working with each other," but it sounds like you guys are actually, you know, really good colleagues and 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 friends as well. And um, it was funny because in the latest issue, Layla Star, there's a moment um where on the wall yep you see a quote there and then it says ram b and so i tweeted about that at ram because he's on twitter and i was like hey this is great and he's like actually that wasn't me this time that was all felipe <laughs> and i was like oh my god i can ask him because we have you on so where did that idea come from to throw ram's name there yeah it was, i mean it's a little homage you know it's it's you have to do it and just ha having a little fun with that there, uh, I guess. Um, yeah. So we got we got a couple uh, just comments in terms of uh, your artwork here. Uh, oh, I lost that there. Well, here, uh, Felipe, with what what kind of research did you do in terms of getting the landscape of Mumbai and India, and just an overall like the aesthetics to feel. Mm -hmm. of, of that culture because when, when i'm reading the book i feel like i'm transported to that landscape to to india it feels very um authentic yeah it's cool that the, the people are feeling it you know because uh i mean it was a uh, i felt it but it, it's really cool that the people are feeling it too you know but uh, i've been in in india i don't know maybe 10 years ago or something like that. And uh, I stayed in Mumbai, actually. So mm -hmm. when this project uh, came up, I did my research actually throughout my photos. Ah. And I, yeah, and I enjoyed a lot the, the, the photos that were taken like uh, 50 p.m. plus, you know, because the, the, the air is so dense, it's completely different from, from other places. And this atmosphere kind of grainy, you know, give this huge uh, gradients throughout the skies, you know, I was feeling, uh, I was uh, really feeling uh, the inspiration from it, you know, so it was from that poet mom uh, poetry moment, you know, that I kind of started to observe the, my surroundings and uh, throughout the day and actually in Lisbon, we have amazing sky too, you know, like a huge sky and I was riding the bicycle while I was working on the layouts and the, the conception of the book, I was working, uh, my studio was away from my home a little bit throughout the river. I was going later in the afternoon and I was enjoying all the, the balances of, of the, the river, the, the color of the river, the, the, the sky and how the people reacted to this light too. So I was feeling this aesthetic, like uh, this is India, this could be like, uh, uh, a place and actually throughout this uh, trip there was this uh, Indian group of guys fishing and I was wa always like watching how, how they were you know like uh, engaging with the environment or what, yeah. with what they are doing you know so a lot of uh, the inspiration was actually from what I was saying so real world you got to, you had the opportunity to travel there um, so I think definitely that it, it comes across in, in your pages and you're talking about, you know, the beautiful uh, skylines and, 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 and sunsets, sunrises that you have, not only in India, but in, in, in Lisbon uh, as well. So another one of the beautiful aspects of the art is, is the color palette. Um, stunning, gorgeous, you know, um, you, got, you got like pastels in there, um, but you've got these very vibrant, uh, colors, but they're almost muted in, in, in a sense. Um, did that, so I'm guessing the inspiration from what you've seen, uh, you know, these skyline, these these um, these views uh, in real life in, in India or in Lisbon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. These uh, these lights are. It can be. In a lot of places, you know, in particular time, and uh, but in India, in special, what one thing that uh, uh, I've put it in in the book that actually doesn't exist in in Lisbon, but exists like uh, in other cities in Asia, 
is this atmosphere, this grainy atmosphere that kind of pulls everything in the same, uh, almost like sheet of paper, you know, it's, it's crazy. And uh, I was trying to, to work with that, you know, it was like a process, it was nothing, uh, this was nothing when I started, I, I knew I wanted to do this, you know. I, I started to play a little bit uh, with, the, with the tones, and like I was mm -hmm. saying before, the, the, the words of Ram are so, it's like really precise, you know, it's like really, it's that word that uh, should be there, you know. So I wanted to do with the same with the color, you know, it's the color needs to be this one, you know. So that's why I'm working with gradients, because I can guarantee you this kind of play. It yeah. comes across. Yeah. I can't say enough good things. Uh, as strong as as uh, Ram's the writing in, in this story is, uh, the art is is just as powerful, if not more. Um, I yeah, I mean, I it. can't, I can't, I can't imagine another person writing it, but I also can't imagine another person drawing this. Like, there's there's something to say about you know as beautiful as Ram's words are. There's also something to say about how beautiful your art is to be able to complement those words so well. Like, they it, it really speaks to it. Um, you've got people here just wanting to say hi to you, telling you, hey, your art's great, just like we're all saying. <laughs> um, we got a question from Oscar here. You mentioned your animation influence, in particular Nickelodeon. Um, did you have a favorite Nickelodeon show? Um, Oscar would love if there was some SpongeBob influence in your work. Spon SpongeBob is actually... I, I didn't grow up with SpongeBob. <laughs> Actually, now uh, I like it, but uh, when I was a kid, I, I didn't, <laughs> that was not my jam. Yeah, but I I I, I love the Ryan Stimpy, of course. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh man, yeah, yeah. that was a good one. It was, good one. Weird. it was really weird because the, those that animation was the first one in the in the the the, the Portuguese show. It was like eight a.m. Okay. So I couldn't see it before I, I was going to the school, but it was really aggressive at the time, you know, this kind of uh, animation. Then I, I've, I've seen uh, Crazy Beavers. I, I liked it a lot. Oh. Cat Dog, Rugrats. Rugrats, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't say, I'm not familiar with Crazy Beaver. Did you say Crazy Beaver? <laughs> <laughs> beavers, one is uh, uh, brown and the other is yellow. And it's just, uh, I mean, it's Nickelodeon okay, from okay. Yeah, like I might stupid things, you know, like that. Uh, that's what, what uh, I might have to ask my kids about. I'm not familiar. Run and Stimpy, <laughs> oh, I'm your guy. We can talk Run and Stimpy all day. And one that is, I was really attached was uh, A. Arnold, too. Yes, yeah. A. Arnold. You can't go wrong with A. Arnold. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so with all your, since you're so influenced by animation stuff, is that something you thought about going into, like doing animation? I've done some animation uh, projects, okay. actually, yeah. Uh, but nothing like um, I, I was working with other people, like in teams, you know. So, um, I mean, I, I always like the animation because actually, if you picture my, my in my style, it's just like a keyframe of animation. Right. So, yeah. 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 The, this kind of uh, influences you can see in that. Uh, the, the poses and the moves and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, I like, uh, in animation, I, I, I like everything, but it's just too much work, you know. You need to... Yes. I want to do yeah. something in my life uh, with it, like a <laughs> cartoon, but uh, it has to be, like, uh, really well prepared. Yeah, and I was thinking, like, in terms of the Layla Star, I mean, is that something that you think... Not that you necessarily would or anything, that, but that could be animated. Because with those, even some angles in Layla Star, even though they're different, I think that's something that really has still a lot of your animation influence with those different camera angles that Sergio was talking about. Like, is that something yeah, you can see be being animated? <laughs> Imagine the team, for example, the team from uh, um, Ian Flux, for example, doing these, or the, I don't know, the, the team from uh, Hobart Valley doing these. Or it, it can be, it can be, but. Uh, I believe uh, the the art is uh, is, is uh, it's uh, doing uh, justice to this too. But uh, it's the story. The story is uh, something that is really important. I think in the moment that we are living, the, the story kind of. I think the pace of the art <clears throat> that respects the story is what uh, gives the. the, the I think the people are ready now to see this because imagine this is if it 
this was in 2019. I don't know if the pace was this one, you know. Mm -hmm. I think the right project in the right time. So yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if it's going to be other thing uh, after. Yeah. yeah. So but so when yeah. you when you grab when you had the chance to, to I guess look at the pitch and you ended up getting that first script and you read it. Did you already have ideas on how you wanted it to look and you know certain scenes how you wanted them to kind of be shot? Because it feels in the way we've talked about how cinematic it does feel. It feels like you're a cinematographer and like you're building the sets and you're coloring it all and you're 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 wanting it shot a specific way. When you read the script, did you already have that idea? Like certain pages, you were like, "I'm going to do this on that page. I'm going to do this on this page." Was that already informed? Uh, I mean, I have a method of uh, of working, and uh, the, the, when I read the script in the the first time, I uh, it's really close in the end. Uh, how it's going to be, you know, but uh, there are some stuff, some knots that are a little bit uh, difficult to work, but some stuff, it's almost immediately, you know. Like, for example, in the first issue, the scene where when Lila leaves the, 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 the hospital, mm -hmm. I wanted to do something in POV, you know, because uh, I always like these kind of shots. Uh, I'm influenced for people that uh, did these, like uh, Robert Valley, for example. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Or Alberto Mielgo, or something like that. And um, but it, it's uh, um, I'm a little bit open to it, you know. I'm not too too straight uh, forward to, to to do it like that, you know. But it, mm -hmm. it's that like, is pop naturally in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, and referring to that first person point of view where she's running out the hospital doors out into the street, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and she ends up getting. Clipped by the by the truck there. That, um, <laughs> I don't know if anybody here has ever seen that, but there's a TV show called Orphan Black that was on a while ago. Um, it was a BBC show and stuff, and that reminded me of that show where um, it's a show that has to deal with uh, this person who's a clone, and there's all these clones, and it's crazy. But she ends up running, and she sees herself getting hit by a train, but that was a clone of her. So remind me of that. So I totally get the uh, the television and the and influences and stuff like that. Um, in terms of the next issue, the next couple of issues, so Layla Star has two more issues, I believe, right? Issue four and five. Um, is there anything you can tease for us on what we can kind of expect? Any feelings we might have? I know when we had Ram on before the second issue came out, I think he was like, oh, yeah, somebody read it early, you know, and they said the first issue was so fun, but the second issue like broke their soul. <laughs> so what can we kind of expect from these uh, last two issues of Layla Star? What I can say, it's uh, getting uh, heavier in a good way, you know? It's, mm. uh, uh, it's more interesting. It's one of these projects for me as an artist that the natural thesis is I'm really willing to read the next script. So, I mean, mm -hmm. and actually when I read it, I'm always like, fuck, this guy did it again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, so issue two for me is was probably my it, at least right now my my top book uh, of the year, and it's not even close. And I was thinking, how how is Felipe and Ram gonna top themselves in issue number three? And you guys you guys are right there, man. I mean, you have the story being told from the perspective of a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's insane and, and it works that's the craziest and part you're like why do i care about cigarette and suddenly by the end of it you're crying over a cigarette like what the heck <laughs> and it, you guys made it work and and even though you know it, it's it's a crazy idea having uh this, the, you know the narrative from the point of the, of, the, of the cigarette i mean at the end of the day the story is is, is universal you know you're talking about you know your first first loves and and heartache and 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 you know, broken heart and, and you feel like, you know, you're going to die, you know, after that, that first, that first heartbreak and you don't know, you don't know what to do with yourselves. Right. So it's a story that I feel, you know, a lot of people can, can probably relate to. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, it's about life, you know, life and death, but in a really yeah. deep way, not about it. You know, it's about uh, the risk of losing everything, you know, like, uh, but um, like, like um, <clears throat> this is this book. When I read it, uh, the, the 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 script, 
I always get a punch, you know, it's like, uh, it's, uh, it's strong because of, because of that, you know, like, that's why I was saying that this book kind of the pace and the rhythm that uh, it's needed to be from the readers too, you know. I don't know if I explained it really well, but uh, uh, the pace of, of the book is low, but uh, it's like strong, uh, strong punches. That, that's what yeah, I that's a good way to put it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, I think that's what keeps us, us, us part of why it keeps us hooked, right? Because even though it, it can read a slower pace, it doesn't matter because every time you turn a page, it's like another gut punch in a good way that, exactly. that, that keeps us going. So, exactly. yeah. The big emotional beats are, are definitely, they're there. Um, and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I can tell you that, uh, for example, and this is a huge tease for the, the issue for when I, when I, I always do in my method, I, I finish, uh, because I work in the whole book at, at, the, at the same time to guarantee that everything is balanced. And um, I do an exercise in the end when I have all the pencils and all the blockings, everything uh, all set up. I do a reading of the the, the, the narration and the, the the dialogues, and I felt emotion after after reading it. You know. Oh, yeah. oh man, it's over for us then. <laughs> it's over for all I mean, of because us. Because it's so it's beautiful, but it's strong. You know, it's like a punch. Absolutely. It's like going to a oh, good. Oh my goodness. Person. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm so excited to read it. I know all of us are. Um, we have one more question here I wanted to touch on. Um, I've been <laughs> loving all of the variant covers for these issues. Are there going to be any special covers for the last two? So I don't know if you know anything uh, uh, about those other covers. Um, anything you know about that? Uh, I know some uh, some of the girls, but I don't know the, the how they going to, to lay out. Yeah, but I, oh, yeah. I, I I've seen all the covers. Yeah, and everything. Uh, actually, this book uh, it seems that everything is going to in, in the right direction too. You know, like for from uh, every angles and uh, the variant covers too. You know, the people that are working, the artists are doing a really really good job. Yeah. Well, awesome. Speaking speaking of covers. This one here, probably my favorite cover this year. I, I love this. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping, is there any plans potentially to have, uh, would you be releasing any prints uh, of this cover uh, on your site? Do you have a site, something? Where my, my, my site is under, uh, not construction, but uh, reconstruction because mm. I'm a little bit, a little bit things a little bit different, but I'm on Instagram by Philip Andrade Artist. And uh, I'm thinking too, you know, because uh, there's really good, uh, co not covers in posters. I, they can be mm -hmm. like good posters even. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Friends, yeah. Because I think everything worked out really, really well. Let's see. I don't know. Uh, you'll, I'll be your, the first, the first customer in line if you guys. Decide. Sergio, will, Sergio will start the Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. I'll I need line up for you. Yeah. I need well, up on the wall. Thank you so much for being on here, Felipe. Is there anything um, you wanted to add before um, we let you get out of here? Anything like you said, your website, your Instagram, you wanted to plug? Any last thoughts? Uh, just thank you guys, everyone, uh, for digging the, the story. But uh, the most important thing, that's what I'm feeling as an author, is that I'm feeling the feelings of the people that are reading it, you know. And there is a book about it. So it seems that uh, for me it's, uh, uh, it's a lot of love that I'm being I, I'm receiving with the book, actually. So thank you all and uh, thank you guys too for, for this interview. And uh, like I said, ultimate tease <laughs> number four will be really strong. So, oh man, Sergio, number four might beat number two for you this year. I don't know. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. The whole series has been fantastic. Thank you so much, Felipe, for taking the time out of your day uh, to join us here on the House of Nerds show. Very much appreciated. Um, the book is resonating. Big success and con congratulations uh, to you and, uh, and to Ram on this wonderful uh, piece of work that you guys have. And I sure hope that um, it's possible in the future we can get more work out of the two of you together because, yeah, I really think you both complement each other's um, 
styles and, and, and your artistry very well. So yes, thank you so much for being on here. We have loved having you on here and all the love you're getting is well deserved. Thank you guys for having me and uh, have a good Father's Day. It seems uh, that is uh, Father's Day in uh, Canada at least. Yeah. Over in Portugal, different. In different Portugal, no, no, it's uh, 19th of March. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> different Father's Day. All right. Well, well thank you so much for listening. Out. We will let you go. I know you have a million crazy good projects to go do that we do not even know about yet. So we are looking so forward to seeing them. Thank you again. Thank you, guys. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Wow. There it is, folks. Felipe Andrade on the House of Nerd show. That's pretty cool. Just, yeah, just amazing. Ugh. I it mean, I just, to be fair, I feel at this weird, like, level of peace at the moment that I didn't have earlier. So, no, he, he was an utter delight. My goodness. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we got some insights into his process there. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, guys, today um, we just have Felipe on. Um, we did want to kind of keep this or at least try. You know, we get out of whack sometimes. So we wanted to try to keep this a little bit of a shorter episode because it is Father's Day for a lot of us. Um, and we know and, everybody wants to spend time with their families. It's, you know, uh -huh. Sunday and everything. So, yeah. and, and any second now, Sergio's boys might bust through his door. <laughs> we don't know. So, yeah, they're probably going to come in through those doors. Again, <laughs> through that way, so. um, but yeah, let's, uh, we're going to do, we're going to check in with our TO Combo Club and then we'll do our copper drop. And then we will be out of here for today. Um, I know since we have guests on, we typically miss our weekend review on the live show. So, um, tomorrow we will be posting our week in review on our channel for you guys to check out. So, um, be sure to have your notifications on, check it out. Um, cause we're not going to leave you hanging, um, completely. We're going to do that tomorrow. Um, what, happens, what happens if I didn't read any comics guys? <laughs> Sergio, you're going to be grounded. You are going to be yeah, grounded. I read, I read nothing. I actually unread previous books somehow. Don't ask me how. <laughs> um, I managed to, so but uh, we'll but see. yeah, real quick before Tia Comic Club, let's uh, we have an advanced review. Um, I don't know if anybody follows me on Twitter, but my uh, advanced review for the Blue Flame 2 for the Wednesday poll will be up tomorrow, the red and one. But today, you get a sneak peek because we're going to talk our advanced review at the house nerd of the Blue Flame 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. did you How read you that? <laughs> this was your book, bruh. Hey, hey. It's been it's been fucking dope, man. It's been good. Um, I loved issue one, guys. Issue two takes it up a notch. Um, so I had mentioned before, no, a lot of a lot of questions, a lot of mystery after issue number one, and we definitely we get some more answers in in number two. But then it also uh, new questions pop up, right? So, I, I feel like I feel like there are questions that were still persisting from issue one that are yeah. still kind of left dangling. I know for yeah. me, uh, I like the fact that what one of the issues that I think Lauren and I had with issue one is that for an issue one, there was so much going on in the in terms of like possible different timelines they're talking about, possible mm -hmm. different characters they're following. How does it all kind of gel together? Mm -hmm. And it really kind of clashed in a way in issue one because you had these different characters the different perspectives all happening at the same time or you're trying to piece it together right it felt very jumbled issue two makes it more focused i found it yeah it took two of those and it expanded upon them so you only had to focus on what seems to be like the past and the present right yeah and i mean i so yeah i agree so issue one i struggled with because there are parts i liked and then there are parts i was like why is this even here in yeah. terms of again like you said too many moving parts going on um and the first issue um this one really focused on what i loved about issue one which was the stuff happening in space the stuff that the blue flame himself is dealing with on this other planet with these aliens um I really enjoyed seeing more of that and why it's important. And I also really appreciate that even though the connection still isn't made the exact way I want it to be yet, um, the connection between what's happening in space with Blue Flame and what's happening in the story on Earth, they're connecting because more connections are drawn here. They're not, 
you know, they're not all connected yet, but they're more connected. And yeah, I really, yeah, I think this was a step up from issue one. This kind of made those connections that I was wanting so bad from the other one, but I didn't get. So this was definitely better for me and definitely convinced me that uh, this is something I need to read. So even though the first one I was like, eh, and I probably would have dropped it if I hadn't, you know, given it another shot. Um, I'm glad I gave it another shot. So, and I think that's just the power of comics, right? Is even if there's something you really didn't care for at first, if you give it another shot, it might go somewhere that is worth it. Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm inter it's interesting that you brought up the fact that you enjoy the cosmic side of the story. For me personally, I enjoy the more grounded part of it. The cosmic side, uh, I feel like we've seen that story before. Like the whole, you're, you're kind of the savior of your entire race. You're being judged right now. I've seen that in multiple different medias, whether it's, you know, in certain video games like, I don't know, Mass Effect or in, in other comics. I feel like that kind of story to me has been done. So I'm a little bit more intrigued with the the, the grounded stuff, like the, the stuff that may have happened in the past or the other stories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The stuff that kind of feels like Watchmen to me in a way. Like it, it feels very grounded and like what's it like having these superheroes, uh, you know, in a real setting and like... The, the st I don't want to spoil, but the stuff that happens in issue one that it addresses in issue two, like it, it's powerful stuff and something I can yeah. totally see happen if there's, you know, real yeah, I think, in our universe. I think no matter which 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 story that's going on in the in this line that you identify with more, I think there's something for everybody. So if you're like you like the ground stuff like you're saying, Steve, this is for you. If you like the cosmic stuff like cosmic stuff like I do, this is also for you. So there's something in this for everybody. <laughs> and it's worth giving a, a good shot at because you will get something out of it. Um so what so, I think yeah. you know with the grounded and the cosmic for me, they play well off each other. Absolutely, you yeah. Know? That's that's the beautiful part about this book, right? Is you have the bigger scope of humanity being put on trial, and and now we're kind of understanding or a little bit why, um, and it, and it plays off nicely. So you know, he's he's representing us, right? Um, and you know, they're talking about, uh, you know why we need to why we're being put on trial and, and how we can uh, us as a species you know strive for more uh right that's all but, cosmic thing right? has nothing to that's, do with yeah. earth but then that's also, the stuff but, i like yeah and the, but then they're also that's it's related with the stuff on the ground right you know how can these superheroes on earth uh you know are, are they relevant how can how can we improve right you have so at the end of issue one, you had, uh, I don't think it's spoiler it at this point anyways, you had um, the shooting spree there at the end, right? That was the big the big kind of um, plot beat there. Um, and so issue two expands on that, you know, it's it's touching on these these things that happen, you know, in, in real life, right? Yeah. Um, tragedies, sure. shootings, and, all that. Right. Um, and, and, and it does a good job. Um, and I think that's so, what... That, that's what sold me a bit more on why the Earth stuff, as much as it's still not my favorite side of the story to read about, right? It's That's not what engages me the most. It's still important, was seeing that. And and you can tell when they're talking about what happened at the end of issue one, when they're addressing that in this issue, that they're really going for the pulling your heartstrings, the full-on empathy. That's exactly what they're going for there. And it works. It's not bad. So, um yeah, y'all. I mean, definitely check out Blue Flame too, because even though you know Sergio loved the first issue, I didn't care for it. Steve was a little weird on it too. I think all of us, it sounds like, are sold on it. So the Blue Flame is definitely worth checking out. It comes out this Wednesday, I believe. Um, so definitely, if you haven't added it to your box or anything yet, get those two, those first two issues. Give them a shot because it's, it's very good, guys. something it's that's good. worth it. And honestly. You know, I know we talk about this all the time in books, but this could be, you know, optioned off into a franchise for a TV or film one day because it addresses all these big pictures. And you, we all know we're sold on superheroes and addressing how they're, you know, humans like us. So, yeah, yeah check so, out. Yeah, the no, I, I dig too. it. You know, beautiful art. Uh, Adam Gorham, uh, Kurt Michael, Kurt Michael Russell uh, on colors and then Christopher Cantwell writing. Check it out, guys. Lots of fun. Highly recommend it. It, it, it. It's good stuff, even somebody that was hesitant, me at first. Um, but yeah, let's check in with T.O. Comic Club. Steve, you were not here last was, week, 
But this week, you all still talked about Buck because you came back. What did y'all talk about? Thanks, Laura. We talked about Blade Volume 1, Undead Again, written by uh, Mark Guggenheim. Oh, and... no. Can't stand the man. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I know. I know. I follow the CW shows as well. I know the Gug. <laughs> I, know, I know Uncle Guggy. I get it. Um, mm -hmm. So for this, we, we've dubbed June Vampire Month. And what better way to do Vampire Month than to have the Vampire Slayer himself, Blade, uh, from Marvel. I've never really read a Blade book. Neither had anyone else in the group. Uh, mm -hmm. So we went into it kind of with open eyes of, ju of just knowing the character from the movies. And that was pretty much it. <laughs> uh, the interesting part about this was when I was reading it, I thought it might be like the lowest bar. Like it might be like now, like you, you test everything against that because that's the low bar. But it was actually pretty good. Uh, the only fault of it was it was written in around 2006, 2007. So it was around the Civil War stuff. <laughs> And anyone who follows comics kind of knows comic books at around, you know, the mid 2000s, they didn't really have genres like they have now. There wasn't really anything that was thriller or horror. There was no tone. If you're reading a comic book, you were reading comic book. I'm reading comic book. They all had the same style and, and there wasn't really anything differentiating them. So I think that kind of affected this book in a way. Um, it also affected the fact that there were really no subscription services and, and trades weren't as popular at the time. So this book really was written for a month to month uh, comic reader picking up the individual issues. And we all know that can kind of affect the story arc because it could have a lot of filler issues or, or issues where they feel one and done because you need to get your money's worth. You need a story to be told within 24 pages and that's pretty much it. So this book has a lot of that. It falls, it falls back on, um, you know, some side, some characters from the Marvel Universe like Spider-Man and Wolverine and Doctor Doom, they all show up in this. But the actual story beats of some of those individual issues are really fascinating. Uh, one of them, Blade gets arrested because uh, there's a bystander who finds him actually, you know, killing another vampire. And the vampire goes to dust. And Blade has to, like, kind of prove his innocence or get out of the whole interrogation. And the <coughs> way that they do is just so clever. It, like, I would love to see a TV show address that. <laughs> uh, I'll, um, one of the other stories is he goes back in time to, to help save Doom's mother. It's wild. It's crazy. I wish these ideas had more time to develop. I wish they had, you know, more issues per story. But other than that, it's actually a pretty good book. So check that out uh, when you can. And next Saturday, Tio Comfort Club, we, we will be discussing American Vampire. Ooh, uh, written right. by Scott Snyder. Snyder. So come join us on the Discord. You can find it by following us on Twitter at TO Comic Book Club. There you'll find the Discord link. You know, come join us. Come talk. We're all in it. Ooh. And uh, next Saturday, 3 p.m. Oh. Eastern Time, we'll be dis discussing American Vampire. Nice. And I didn't, I didn't know Stephen King has a writing credit on that. On he that does. Book. Yeah. He actually oh. helped. Uh, he helped Scott Snyder. With a portion of it, I think, That's or at least cool. a side story in this. He he, mm -hmm. wrote, he wrote something of this. Yeah. Okay. I think I think right there that because I haven't read that um, series, um, but with that little bit of info, it just it, you just hooked me, Steve. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll be joining you guys. Uh, Steve caught the Sergio fish again. Good job, Steve. That's it, man. <laughs> That's it. Nice. So so check that out, y'all. The links, everything you talked about, it's all in our description of the video. So if you're like, I don't remember what you said, check all the links out. We got you taken care of. Um, let's go to our last and our uh, favorite segment. Uh, we got our cop or drop. So last week, Steve, you were not here, so you did not get a say. I, I love this for <laughs> us. <laughs> um, but Mason from Comics and Crosses, um, he came on and hung out with us. And we actually were like, you know what? Let's let him pick. And so he picked our book this week, and our book to read this week was Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, which it was Sergio that pitched it, so I technically lost. But you know what? I'm wearing a Supergirl <laughs> shirt. I won. You won. Laura, you won. You won. You won. <laughs> I'm not going wrong, which is great, because Sergio usually kicks my ass on this show. So here we are. Um, so uh, we, uh, we wanted Mason to be able to give his thoughts. He could not be here today, but he did record a short clip for you guys. Um, where he lets you know his thoughts on his pick of the week. So yeah, I'm going to pop that up here real quick so we can see what Mason thought, and then we'll all chat too. Curious. 
What up, everybody? It's Mason here with Comics and Crosses, and I was actually the one who picked Supergirl, World of Tomorrow. Uh, or is it Woman of Tomorrow? World of Tomorrow? Yeah, for um, for this week's um, Copper Drop pick. And um, it was issue one of an eight-part series by Tom King and Bill Quis Evely, I believe it is. So um, yeah, I gotta say that I came into this totally blind. I didn't read any of the Future State Supergirl stuff, but this book really surprised me and I really enjoyed it. It was a strong start to a story. Um, it was really unique for me. I mean, not something, not delivered in a way that you would expect a super person, Superman, Supergirl, Superboy, whatever story to be, um, to be sorta brought to you. So um really good um the art um was cool it worked for me um i think the turns and the twists and but mainly the narration the the perspective using somebody else's i don't want to ruin too much but there's a different character's perspective who's used to kind of uh bring you through the story and so the way that that's done i thought was really excellent so um i gotta say this is definitely a series that's worth reading um I, I think at least to give issue one a try see if you like the rest of it um so that's my take um i'm glad that uh that lauren sergio and steve had to read it because uh it was good for me to read so um that's my take pick it up give it a try definitely a quality title tom king either hate him or you love him this time i love him well, there thank you, you Mason, you my go. dude. So, yeah, and you can, so that's what Mason you can find him on, uh, I was going to say, you can find him on uh, uh, YouTube, Comics and Crosses. Yeah, yep. check out so, his channel. Guys. And he's yeah. on Twitter at Comics N, as in the letter N, Crosses, because <laughs> as he says, shorter characters. Um, yeah, so Mason, I'm glad he checked back in with us. So it sounds like he really enjoyed it, and it was a nice surprise for him. Steve, what did you think about it? How 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 did this go for you? All right, so I love the way Mason ended that video. Tom King, you you either love him or hate him. Um, I've loved a lot of what Tom King's done, really. I, honestly, even even as controversial as it is to say, Heroes in Crisis, I loved I loved it. Like I love I love the artwork of it. I love the writing. I felt like editorial maybe got a little too involved with the original idea of the story, but of the Tom King stuff, I really enjoyed it. There, there hasn't been too many that I haven't enjoyed by Tom King. Even his Batman. Honestly, it's one of my favorite Batman art, uh, yeah, stories. You're wrong, Steve. Continue. I know. <laughs> it's, not, it's controversial. It is. But I love that kind of Batman. I love that kind of Selena. I'm really enjoying Tom King's writing for a lot of the stuff I've read from his. Um, going into this book, I didn't know what to expect. You just look at the cover and you're like, I don't understand what Supergirl's doing with a sword. I don't understand why she's cosmic now i don't understand any of this but it's she's intriguing. been cosmic that's not new i was gonna say well, steve she's I'm, that's all she's, she's been is sci-fi yeah. and yeah. cosmic literally okay. it i'm go okay i'm going in you haven't read supergirl and i haven't no so i'm going in completely blind i don't know mm -hmm. the character right so mm -hmm. i think for it being a Fair book enough. for those that don't know the character it does a pretty good job um i will say this it is a one of eight and I want to emphasize that. It is part one. It is chapter one of this story. It's not going to have all the answers. It's going to be the thing that that gets you to read, you know, part two, three, four, five. And as ah, an issue, so as you're an contradicting issue, what you thought about the blue flame one where it didn't have answers or questions and you're frustrated. And now you're like, oh, but it doesn't need answers. No, Lauren, I'm not saying I'm not saying you're, that. You're I'm saying my mind because I'm wondering the same thing to no, be honest. I'm I'm saying with the blue flame, there's two there there are two with Blue Flame number one, there are too many jumbled ideas, too many different perspectives. There was too many loose threads. That I don't know any of these characters. Supergirl, I in this book, I understand the main character. She's Su Supergirl, Kara zor -El. I know Crypto. He's Crypto. He's a super dog. The, the new character they, they introduced as the narrative perspective, I understand her because there's exposition there. Tom King tells you who this character is, what she's feeling, the motivations of her. Uh, I don't want to compare it to any other book but you know mm -hmm. you brought up blue flame blue flame number one didn't have those things there was no exposition it didn't tell me who the characters were everything was loose this book is a part one it gets you going it get you you understand what planet it is who the characters are in this book what the motivations are as a part one it was pretty solid like it did everything it needed to to me at least and <coughs> yeah. 
it, it had it had Tom King writing, which again it can be hit or miss. It was a hit for me. He nailed it, um, and it, it was backed up by beautiful artwork. Like I don't I don't think I've ever been as impressed and intrigued to read a Supergirl book as I am right now. Really? Eh? Wow. It like it's 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 interesting because. Like Lauren said, sometimes Supergirl could be cosmic. She's a lot of cosmic, and sometimes cosmic can be taken as hard sci-fi, like we've seen in Hickman's kind of books. <clears throat> Hickman's books are very sci-fi. This book is sci-fantasy. Well, this right. is more Star Wars than it is Star Trek. Like it right. feels very epic in a way. And 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 I like that you brought up the fantasy because to me, and 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 uh, a pal in the chat said it too. The True Grits Meets Princess Bride tone story is interesting, great art. Um, and that's what got me. So originally when I saw, because they released the preview pages with her, that sword, that uh, preview you had earlier, that was the scene where she's in the bar. That was the preview scene we got before this issue came out. And when I saw that, I was like, I don't know if I like this art for Supergirl. I don't hate the art itself or the style. The style is gorgeous. But I was like, I don't know how I feel about this for a Supergirl book. And I still don't care for it necessarily in the bar scene here like it's still not my favorite but it works later on once you get to her out and you know out on the planet doing things and and, and after the bar scene and stuff the art style works better and it takes a more fancy approach mm. um so i'm glad you mentioned that sergio what are your thoughts before i go more into it <laughs> um i think initially i was i was thrown off by by um the the dialogue that medieval style fantasy style dialogue mm -hmm. the old english i'm i'm not a fan of that at all yeah uh, just in general um you're not a fan and, of lord of the rings are you oh i love lord of the rings okay. what that, i love it you don't make sense then it. sergio yeah. that's all that <laughs> well, I mean, is medieval just, fantasy crap <laughs> that's just that's just great writing that's just a great book but anyways um yeah so with with supergirl um, so I was a little thrown off by that initially. Um, I wasn't familiar with this character. So is this is this a new character? Then completely brand new. The, no. narrator, the narrator character. The narrator is yes. The narrator. Yes. The narrator, yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, the art. Uh, the art is cool. Um, so with with the story, it, it, it took me a little bit uh, uh, to get into it. Yeah, uh, I was wondering is is it gonna be in in this style for the whole book? Because if it is, I know I'm not reading after. Yeah, so, but then they introduced mm -hmm. Supergirl, and then you know she's speaking her normal, mm -hmm. her normal I guess Earth, uh, English American uh -huh. uh, language. Uh, so I was thankful for that. Um, the story the story was cool, man. You know, I dig I dig the sword. I think that's badass. Yeah. Um, it's because at the end of the day, it's still Supergirl. You know. I mean, Supergirl <laughs> needed a sword for years. Be gay, do crime. I I mean, it, I'm just saying it's time <laughs> she had it. So I was thankful. Like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it, it's cool, right? Um, but there's also a purpose of... to the sword. Like it, the sword is impactful. It's not just a sword. Like there's a. Oh yeah, sword. no the, the the sword without giving anything away, right? Because no spoilers. Um, the sword is a literal plot point, guys. Yeah. So it, it it's, it, not, it's, it's just important. Or just a she, oh, she's got a sword now, right? Yeah. It, there's there's a reason to it. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, uh, I liked the, you know the emotional beats. Uh, she had that one scene where she relates to the narrator in terms of losing losing her whole world. Right, and then you mm -hmm. see that emotion in her eyes and in her face, and that was pretty cool. Um, you know, it's still Supergirl. She's got the no kill rule. Um, well, and, and so at that point, I liked where I liked how she said it. Like, I liked so. Okay, for me as somebody who grew up with, you know, not grew up with, but as somebody who knows Supergirl's character a bit, I'm a bit more informed, of course. Um, I really liked that she's a young adult here. She's not a kid. She's not a teenager. She's a young adult, but nonetheless an adult, right? Mm -hmm. She can cuss, great. She can do this, great. But I really liked how, like, you know, this the kid was talking to her, and, and some girl's like, you know what, kid, I want to help, but I have these duties, I have to be responsible, but, you know, don't kill, it's bad for you. Like, it was yeah. just hilarious, that, that kind of more adult, dry humor, but still being an honest person and yeah. still a good person. Because to me, like... Supergirl's never been given that in her characterization, you know, as particularly in comics. I mean, here or there she has, but 
not very often has she gotten that. Um, and this was like Superman. He always gets that characterization. He can be an adult that jokes and laughs, but also he still always makes the right choices. That's who Superman is, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, not to bring Superman up in super conversation like we always do, but, you know, it was nice to see Kara get her own character and be her own adult without having to have Clark's influence right there to make her an adult, right? And so I like that Tom King, I was shocked because, you know, Kind of like uh, Jeff said here, you know, he's tried Tom King and he's never been into it. Tom King is very hair miss for me. I don't love him. I don't hate him. I'm always cautious with the man because there are things he can do well. And then I think for me, I like ideas he has, but his execution is usually what lacks for me. I'm like, oh, I like the idea, but you executed it not in the way you should have, in my opinion. Like mm -hmm. Heroes in Crisis. Everybody hates Heroes in Crisis, a lot of people. I love the ideas behind that. His execution of it was terrible, though. And so that's why it's so beaten up. And I get it. Here, he surprised me because I didn't know what to expect of this. And I agree with you, Sergio. When I started reading this from the perspective of the new character's narration and all this stuff, I was like, I don't want this. Like, at first, it didn't work for me. Yeah, um, right. sure. But yeah. once Supergirl brought, got in and once it started ad adding up and the chemistry played off those two characters and such... And, and by chemistry, I just mean, no, you know, there are two characters that learn each other. Um, it worked for me. Yeah. And once the girl was brought in, I said, this is what I wanted. So for me, I like Tom King that he used some exposition here, give us background, but it was too much exposition. He could have done less. Exactly. It could have been like four pages less yeah. of that. Um, the yeah, interesting so part, so. though, mm. of the exposition, though, what we will say is the narration is something where it's talking about this as a past event. So you already know from the narration, it's leading somewhere. And you're yeah, but it takes forever. <laughs> it takes <Yeah>. forever. <laughs> and no. I'm like, dude, and he's, it's like he's trying to get me invested in this character I've never met, their life story. I don't know anything about this character. And now that I'm learning, I still don't know this person. You're, you're throwing it at me all yeah. at once. Give me more time. So I kind of wish the exposition was spread out a bit more through the issue. So um, what we've done is but, that's how it's supposed to get you to care about the character with, with the body. Well, not with all exposition. I have to actually see the yeah. my love for that character with Ruthie. I didn't get to like her until she interacted with Subaru and I saw her personality come out. Her mm -hmm. life sort of being sad, kind of like Steve said with uh with you know uh the blue flame and hearing about the cosmic stuff before i've heard the sad story before oh my parents were blah 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 and this happened and it's so tragic and i want vengeance it's a vengeance story i've heard that before from humorous characters yeah. including supergirl herself which i'm glad so far it's not a vengeance story but that's also i'm also iffy on that because depending on what happens in this end of this issue if tom king is the vengeance route with supergirl i'm gonna be pissed because i'm tired of that with her too but um but overall um I got to, I liked Ruthie once I got to know her because her character is very much like Drax from the MCU. Yeah. Sarcastic, kind of, you know, old school, even though she's a kid. Imagine Drax's character as a kid. That's how it is. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I agree with you here, Oscar. Like, I want the story to become more Supergirl centric. And I think based on the solicitation for either the third or fourth issue, the September solicitations have come out, um, it looks like it is going to focus more on Supergirl and her perspective based on. That solicitation. So, Oscar, and, and those of you that might be doubting it, if you're concerned that it may not be Supergirl centric um, and you are okay reading solicitations, check out the solicitations for future issues. That might help you. Mm. Yeah, I will say, in terms of Ruthie as a character, in this book, you have you have two different Ruthies, though, in a way, right? You have Ruthie as her narration, which is from it, in the future tense, in a way, talking about these events as, as them yeah. happening in the past, as if it were a storybook. Um, mm -hmm as if they are telling the story to someone. And then in the book, in all the pages, you have, you know, past Ruthie of who she used to be. So I like the idea of the person kind of reminiscing or reflecting on the events that happened with, mm -hmm. you know, the future events, knowing the information that she knows now about Kara, right? And yeah. being able to, in the narration, talk about how, like, she was wrong to originally, like, doubt her. She was wrong to, because she didn't know any of this information. I like that kind of, dichotomy of you've got this character who's kind of rash and, and, and impulsive um in the past and her narration now is kind of reflecting on on her being grown sure. like, i want to see that growth it, it leads me to want to see uh what happens to these two in you know two three four five all the way up to eight it, it to me at least it kind of set a nice and, road for me 
And, and, and I, I actually like they mentioned that because, yeah, now that you said that, for Supergirl's character, I like that for once, she's not the one that's impulsive and somebody else has to call to her and pull her back. Because that's yeah. always been her story. If she's angry or impulsive, she's a kid, blah, 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 somebody has to rein her in. In this case, she might be the one that has to rein Ruthie in a bit, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's one of those things, it's not like Future State, where in the Future State story, that frustrated me because even though... You know, <laughs> I like that. Um, even though Car is a grown ass woman, you know, full ass grown ass, not young woman, grown ass woman, future state, she was still struggling with her, you know, her anger and impulsiveness. Like she was still twenty two, and I was like, "What the fuck?" That no, she's she should be past this. And here in this story, it seems to an extent. I don't think she's completely past it. And that's valid. She's a young adult, but she's more past it, and that she knows, hey, I've been there. I may have tendencies to lean this way, but I also know better now. I know that if I lean that way that I need to be held accountable for that. And I will be held accountable, yeah. you know? Um, and, and, and so I like that. Um, that said, I am interested to see if the narration continues for every issue with Ruthie, you know, the other Ruthie, the future Ruthie, because yeah, the solicitation for the third or fourth issue coming out in September, it's, it sounds like it's going to be very Cara centric. So I, I don't know how you can narrate that solicitation. Um, through future Ruthie, because it, it sounds like it's going to be from Cara's point of view and what she's doing. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to see what Tom King does there, but again, I'm nervous because again, Tom King can do great things, but if his execution slips, it can take yeah. a story from here to here in a half a second, just because the execution went wrong. So, yeah. um, but that said, I mean, I really enjoyed the issue. You know, at first I read it and there's something at the end that hit me hard. And I was like, are you kidding me, Mr. King? You had me, but then you did this one thing right at the end. You I asshole. liked it. I liked that part. Honestly, no, I hated it. I hated it, but I loved it. It, it gives what? a reason to feel invested. No, but they did this in Future State too. In Future State, they did the thing at the end of this issue. They did it in Future State out of nowhere too, and they keep doing this to that one character. As and I'm a, tired of it. As a, person, tired of it. as a person who's not read Future State, this is the only thing I'm, I'm reading of Supergirl. I'm, I'm wondering I, what, what you guys are talking about. Yeah. At the end of the issue, something happens to yeah, a character. Yeah. I don't. don't you're, talking about the, you're talking about the dog. Crypto? No, we're not no, talking, shut about, up, Sergio. We're not talking <laughs> about the dog. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't I, worry about it. We'll I talk do, about later. But, I, do, um, I do like yeah. that, Lauren, you mentioned um, Supergirl kind of feeling for this, for, for Ruthie, because she does feel impulsive in a way. I like that idea of a mentor-mentee dynamic. And it's I like that for once, Supergirl's yeah. a mentor. She's yeah. always the one that has to be mentored by Clark or you know, whoever else, you know, they throw to mentor her. She's always the one that people are coddling going, oh, my God, but you should learn better. You have to do better. And she's fighting like a teenager 24-7. Now she gets to be a mentor, which is what I want as a Supergirl fan because she was the one that was supposed to take care of Clark originally. This is everything. So this is great. So uh, for that reason, yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely going to cop it again just because there's things I like enough about it. I'm willing to keep giving Mr. King a chance. It's going decent. I'm just I I'm ready with a pitchfork though, Mr. King. Don't mean grab the pitchfork, but I will. Now, Sergio, where do you fall on this copper drop? Uh, I'm gonna cop it. Gonna oh, cop that surprises it. me. I, yeah. I'm surprised by hearing that too, but yeah. No, I mean I liked it enough. It's not like uh, I'm not, I wasn't blown away. Right. Um. But uh, yeah, I, you know I liked it enough that I, I want to see what where the story goes and um. I want to find out about uh, my boy Crypto. If anything happens to him, <laughs> uh, then 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 I'll be dropping the book. I mean, I'll draw the line. And then and then did you guys catch? It was a cool little. She so she has to travel to a red sun planet in order uh -huh. to get drunk. Yeah, to get drunk. In order to get, to get drunk. drunk. Uh huh. A little shit like that. I was like, I so love that. I love that guys. shit. It makes sense. So. Uh, yeah, yeah and, overall, like, like you know, you guys heard my points already. I'm not going to repeat myself. Uh, cop it. I'm, I'm Steve, going. what you thinking? Cop it. Definitely. I'm a cop. Mm -hmm. cop you know book. what? We're going to have another unanimous because I'm going to say cop it too. Yeah. Check it out, guys. Um, if you are a fan of Supergirl, um, if you've never read a Supergirl be book before, anything like that, pick this up. Give it a shot. Um, yeah. It is good. I'm hoping yeah. it continues to be. And I definitely am hoping that as the series does well, because it's a limited run, um, we will get another Supergirl ongoing um, because she definitely deserves it. And she definitely deserves to have it as an actual adult. 
So here for it. So <laughs> pick it up, guys. Pick up Supergirl. Check it out. Let us know if you think we made a good choice or not. You know, maybe we're just wrong, but you know, we're gonna be wrong in our own way. <laughs> Personal preference, right? You can never be wrong with what you like. True. Yeah. True. I don't know. Okay, I mean, uh, an addendum to the <laughs> No, Steve. With what's going on? Books. So with this week <laughs> on Cop or Drop, um, since I am hosting, um, and I get didn't get to choose last week because I let our our good pal Mason with comments across his shoes. I get to pick. So I don't know what the heck these guys have picked out for me. I don't remember everything that's coming out next week. So, hit me. Who wants to go first? Steve, you can go first, bro. Oh, perfect. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> uh, I know we just read a DC book for Copper Drop. I know it was one mm -hmm. of Lauren's favorites. Supergirl is your Supergirl Stan. I know that about you. Um, yeah, facts. facts. <laughs> I will facts. stand. Facts. Sorry, guys. I'm one of those people. I will. Facts are, we're coming up to a DC character's uh, 80th anniversary, and DC will be doing something special for this character. You know, before you finish that, I just want to say, Supergirl had her 80th anniversary before, or maybe it was 60th. It was some anniversary big like that, and DC didn't do shit for her. So, right. anyway, continue. So, who are they doing things for? So who does DC love? Taking the wind right out of my sail, Lord. Man. Man. <laughs> yeah. Okay, who do we love? Jeez, I, I feel like this is an important character that even I will love. So <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, Wonder Woman black and gold. Okay. Oh, so that's the one woman DC loves is yep. Wonder Got it. Okay. <laughs> um, it's a book that uh I'm pretty sure it's an anthology type series. There's gonna be different short stories from different writers Ooh. and artists within this. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if the the actual art will be like the you know the title and, and the cover here where it will be black and white with the hints of the gold. Whether you know it depends on mm -hmm. certain things like the lasso. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I yeah, think it yeah. might actually yeah. be like that. That'd be um, sick. But yeah, we're, so we're following <clears throat> Wonder Woman kind of through the ages between these short stories that are going to be told in it. It's the 80th anniversary, so you know it's going to be something special. Um, and it's pretty interesting DC's done this in terms of like like a mini series for her because we've had anniversaries recently with you know the Joker anniversary and the the Catwoman anniversary and a lot of those books they're just kind of one shots filled with like eighty pages I, of I, 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 again they, they do this for their two they main should, they, people Batman and Wonder Woman that's it. Yep. Not even Superman. <laughs> I know. Superman only got like the Action Comics 1000, which was oh, the same man. thing Catwoman and Joker got. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really intrigued to, to read this. I'm really intrigued to see how they kind of inform the Wonder Woman character. They look at her past, how she looks, you know, her current DC continuity is pretty amazing. So I'm really intrigued to see what Black and Gold does. Mm, okay. All right. Whoa. That's All my right. pick. All right. I, 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 okay. I, I like some Wonder Woman. You can't go wrong with her. I mean, tag yourself. I'm her arm right there. Just, just the bicep. <laughs> right. Wrapped around her. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, I'm going to win this one because my pick is <laughs> a heater. Oh. I brought, I brought the heater. Uh, oh. <laughs> Batman Reptilian. All right. Oh. Uh, this book is going to be. You went all out with this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not playing around. Two weeks in a row <laughs> with uh, with DC. Um, I mean, listen, you got Garth Ennis writing this joint, Liam Sharp, who's a legend, man. His, his stuff is like insane, crazy. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Uh, so I'll give you a quick uh, quick synopsis on on the bad. Oh, I got a whole um, pitch from you today, Sergio. I'm yeah, so honored. The whole, I mean, so you really don't need it. This is I'm really gonna step back and enjoy the pitch. I, I should have just threw it up there and, and just <laughs> you know, and not said a word. But so uh, it's uh, what strikes fear into the hearts of those who terrorize Gotham. It used to be Batman, but something far more frightening than a mere man stalks the shadows, and it's after Gotham's villains. How savage must a monster be to haunt the dreams of monsters? Pick up this dark and bone-chilling tale by comics legends Garth Ennis and Liam Sharp to find out. Man, I'm looking forward to this one. Um, you, so, I, I'm going to keep it 100. You guys would be 
messed up not to go with this one. <laughs> this, this is this is gonna be. I have a. Have you guys seen the preview pages for this? Oh, I have. Oh, Sharps are okay. To be fair, so I've seen the hype about wow. it. I've seen the preview pages, and let right. me tell you. The biggest thing that makes me want to read it is Sharp's art because I love the gothic style oh. Batman art. The the really drilly, like looks like a painting style, and then his long pointy ears and mm, like that's my Batman shit. I love that shit. So it looks it looks mint. It looks like his his, his Liam Sharp's taking his his art craft to like another level with this. I mean, he he did a Kickstarter recently on his art book, and he got mm -hmm. he got like over like five hundred percent funded yeah, on it, like that or something. It's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just an art book. It's just his art in a book. It's not a new comic or anything. Yeah. Like, that's how big the dude is. But Absolutely I mean, insane. The story really is just taking the lizard from Amazing Spider-Man and, like, putting him in Batman. So Incorrect, sir. Incorrect. Who, who needs another Batman? We all talk about how Batman's at everything. <laughs> Erroneous. Let's Steve. talk Wonder Woman. Let, let's have her <laughs> point on people. Let's have her use the use the lasso. Get some truth out here. We've all read too many Batman. Let's read some. <laughs> Man. Man. Um, you know, I I might need um the audience to help me here because I I'm pretty mm. I I'm torn to a good amount here. Um, Dragon Rangers. You know, give up give us your lasso of truth, guys, in the chat. Um, which one? If I had, if we have to pick one to cop, Reptilian. which one is the Reptilian. most important to cop? And, and we got uh, we got our boy Mason. He's telling you, yeah, you know, don't hate Steve. <laughs> don't be a hater, bro. It's, it's just we've read too many Batman books. Let's right. give it a break. We have it on the show, Steve. I think this will be our first. Yeah, man. Listen. This will be our first Batman, yeah. and it's a Black Label book. Mm. So I don't know. I mean, and Black Label's been bringing the heat. Let's let's keep it. Let's to keep be it fair, cool. okay. Here's how I'm thinking. I read Wonder Woman Dead Earth when that was out, and that was a great Black Label book. Absolutely amazing. One of my favorite Wonder Woman books, right? If this Batman reptilian story can be a good, that good a Batman story um, as a black label, I mean, I think I'm going to lean towards reptilian, guys. I think we got to do reptilian. Um, you know, to be fair. Wow. I wow. think you went with the straight white man, the rich billionaire Bruce Wayne <laughs> over Diana, the lovely. No, see, woman, you know, I, to be fair. I want if I want Wonder Woman, I want quality Wonder Woman, and not that this won't have great art and possibly good stories, but I feel like you know because a bit again, DC has been doing the, you know the the black and white for Batman, the red and blue for Superman. This is another money grab from DC, in my opinion. That's all this is. This is, is a no, money no, no, grab. No, 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 but that is still a black <laughs> label. It's fucking gorgeous. This is easily only a money grab to me. Really? You know, I mean, that's I how I feel. Like, this isn't really? another... Again, when DC did the Wonder Woman Dead Earth Black Label, to me, that was a money grab. That was an amazing story. Bad shit crazy. It was phenomenal. I have it in my box over there. I love it. Um, <laughs> Oscar. See, people... See, no, no, no. See, Oscar, I'm with you, and we've here's why I'm with you. We've got Cancel the Batman. No, no, no. Stop. Cancel the Batman ongoing. Cancel the DC Comics ongoing, and just give me the Black Label Batman. You know, I'm all for giving me three solid Batman books, and I think, think, and I'm hoping, I could be wrong, this could be one of the three. I don't need 30 books. That said, I know a lot of people are probably mad at me for saying cancel the Batman ongoing. I'll go in my corner. <laughs> But yeah, let's do reptilian, man. I mean, cool. I, I just I can't say no to it. Sure you can. No. Let's read about a woman. Uh, a wonder woman. Hey, hey! No, when Supergirl gets an 80th anniversary issue, you bet your ass for picking that up, but DC won't give it to her. Therefore, this is DC's punishment. I'm gonna remember that with if and when Supergirl has an idiot, and I'm gonna. She I'm did, gonna I'm pretty sure. You know what? I got. I'm gonna double check this right now. I'm so mad because so you're, you're taking it out on on Wonder Woman because DC I'm, didn't give her any any love. You're taking it out on Wonder Woman. Hey. What was that? Her maybe it was her 60th. It was it was some big anniversary, and it was like they didn't do anything. Yep, it was last year. Last year, March 30th was her. 60th anniversary, and did any of you hear about it? I know I didn't, because I mean, DC didn't do anything. So DC, this is your punishment. Mm, there's COVID. <laughs> if you're getting quality women, then make sure we're getting the quality out of our women. I don't want you just be money grabbing them. But that said, I mean, you know, I'm so big at Batman I mean, books, so I, I get it. I, I am so big at Batman books, so I can't wait. The straight wait. white bachelor wins again. 
To be yeah. fair, I've seen the solicitation for this book where they also talk about killing villains in it and the Joker might get killed and I want to see the Joker die. Yeah, it should be a good book. So, Honestly, I'm both, here for it. <laughs> Kill the Joker! Uh, I, I'll joke, but both of these books you kind of can't go wrong with. Mm. So, um, it, yeah. Same with last week, right? Last week's The Decision. Uh, you couldn't go wrong with either of them. Exactly. So, yeah. Steve, stop yeah. backtracking. Just take the L, bro. I'm not taking the L. <laughs> take this one, Sergio, right? this means you've yeah. won two weeks in a row now. What the hell? Stop Sergio, it. Hey. Sergio, you I didn't think, win think, Wonder Woman leaders, lost. Man. Listen, why are you guys acting surprised? <laughs> Yo, um, what do we, before we get out of here. Yeah, I was going to say, um, Sergio, we do have um, a special announcement for next week. Um <laughs> We gotta do this one thing, um, Sergio. I don't know how you could forget it because this is this is all you, man. So, yeah, um, yeah. real quick before we get out of here, y'all. Um, next week we're reading Reptilian, and um, next week we have um some more guests coming on. And Sergio, who who the hell did you get on our show now? <laughs> guys, guys, guys. This this like we've this has been in the works for for time. I've been wanting to announce this for like for months. Uh, man, the House of Nerd. Is super duper geeked and hype to bring on the creators of that Texas Blood, Chris Condon and Jacob Phillips. What? Live uh, next oof. Sunday, man. I'm fucking hype, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is my favorite book, man. You know, you guys know I love it, man. Uh, got a chance to check out issue seven and the good times keep rolling man there's more great stuff we're i'm um, honestly i'm excited we're excited to bring these two gents onto the show live heck live. yes um it's gonna be good it's gonna be good we got we got some stuff planned for that um it's gonna be a fun one man i promise you so, uh, Steve, you got some reading to do. I do. I've, I, I've never <laughs> read any of that Texas blood, so you're gonna you're gonna yeah. dig it, bro. I, I hope so. I'm holding I you know. to it. I was gonna say, yeah. if he doesn't, I'm afraid Sergio might show up at your house, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will. I will. You're, I, you're I, both in Toronto I, too. He knows where you live. <laughs> yeah. yeah, same city, man. It's, I'll be there in no time. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. No, listen, guys. We're we're like we're excited. I'm excited about this one. Uh, that Texas Blood. If you guys aren't already reading it, I recommend uh, highly to check out that book. Yeah, check it out. When does issue seven come out? The uh, the new uh, arc. When's it come out, Sergio? So issue seven, the new arc, uh, comes out on June the thirtieth. Okay. Like this Wednesday, but the following, so the Wednesday following our show. Okay. Um, I've had the chance to read it. It's top notch, guys. Um, and actually, I'm gonna be uploading uh, either Tuesday or Wednesday um, my review of uh, an advanced review of that Texas Blood number seven. So please, uh, you know, be on the lookout for that one. Uh, it's gonna be good. It's good times, man. Heck yeah. I am yeah. excited. I'm excited to hear Steve's slots because you guys butt heads a lot. Like one of you's like, I love this. The other one's like, no. Yeah, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly I'm, like, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to fight Steve if he's <laughs> um, so stay tuned. Uh next yeah. week, uh Chris Condon and Jacob Phillips might witness the first house of nerd fight, you know. <laughs> mm. Could be a bloodbath um, over at that Texas <laughs> blood. You know, it goes with that Texas blood. We'll just add bath at the end. Love That's it. it. Love it. So That's yeah, it. tune in next uh next Sunday, guys, at eleven AM. Um, don't forget tomorrow we will be posting our week in review up for you guys. So be sure to have your notifications on, check out the video, comment, let us know what you think of our top picks. Um, find out if Supergirl is in my top pick or not, or in any of their top picks, you know? Ooh. Um, and before we go, um, I see <laughs> my uncle came in. What up, Bart? Glad you're here. Hey, uh, Bart. He's so another, nice. uh, he's a, he's one of my other uncles who, uh, helped me get into comics and stuff. So I'm glad nice. he's able to pop in. Um, so yeah, guys, we will see you next Sunday. Happy Father's Day again to those of you, those of you that it's a harder day for. Thank you for tuning in for a bit. Hope we were a good distraction for you. And we will see you next Sunday. Next Sunday. Later, guys.